It's cold out, Will. Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome back to the channel. It's another chilly day out there. Um, today is Sunday. I put up a video on Friday, and I have to work again tonight. I really don't want to. Um, starting to wimp out with all these cold weather temperatures that seem to be stretching on. I mean, you look at the forecast and it says it's warming up and then you get, you look at it a few days later and it's, um, it's gone back down to freezing cold snaps again. So I don't know. Um, today, tonight is supposed to be like minus 25 degrees Celsius, which I'm not sure, but I'm thinking it's that's in around minus 18, 19 Fahrenheit. I could be wrong. I haven't checked it out. But I know tomorrow night it's supposed to be minus 29. It's supposed to be. It could change. Which is minus 20 point something degrees Fahrenheit. So, um, my biggest thing right now is when it's that cold... I mean, I can take my batteries and stuff with me, but everything in the van freezes up, like literally freezes up. Stuff in the camper is totally frozen. And I don't know, I can't fit my mattress in my knapsack and that freezes. It's a gel foam. It's super comfortable. Like I have the most awesome bed with all my covers and everything. So when it's cold, I am totally snug and cozy and Wilson he has his blankets if he chooses usually when it's that cold he'll come up on the bed with me he hasn't been doing it much since we've been out here um, I don't know if he feels more on guard or what it is um, you wouldn't think so because we're we're not in the city so there's there's really nothing going on except for the coyotes but getting back to the mattress, I have to put down a double fleecy blanket and it's my body heat that thaws out that foamy. And honestly, I really don't know how healthy that is. I can feel it in my back and in my lungs. And I just seem to have this nonstop chill going through me the whole time that I'm in bed trying to get sleep. And it's usually at least four hours before it starts getting to a point where I'm not feeling ice cold all around me. So, I don't know. I'm wimping out. I hate to admit it. I'm, I'm wimping out. I'm just hoping that, um, that this cold spell is short-lived. And somebody commented... They were sorry that I had the winter blues. Um, it's just sweet of them to think think of me and be concerned. Um, another person was worried that I wasn't okay, but I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. Um, but I don't get the winter blues. I I just get very bored, and it's that's what's getting to me. Is I'm just sitting here doing nothing and. Um, if I had my van built out and the camper built out, at least I could be baking or snuggled up by a fire reading a book or the things are just, and that's what I did last week is I read a lot and I listened to some audio books and stuff for the last two weeks. And, you know, I puttered away at some things, um, with what I could do in the van. There's always things that you can do, organizing and cleaning and stuff like that, but, well, not when you're 
cleaning stuff is in the camper frozen. But there's always something that you can do. And um, I ate a lot. I snacked a lot. Drank a lot of coffee. So there's always things that you can do. But this morning I did up a budget. Now a lot of people have told me it's going to take me quite a long time to do that camper. And I didn't think it was going to take me that long to do this van. But with the cold weather, it really put a damper on things. So as far as the camper goes, this could be totally unrealistic. And I'm sure some people will comment on that. And everybody that comments, I think there's only been two times that I've had some rude people. Otherwise, everybody is just super awesome. I just love my subscribers. They're just awesome people. And um, they, they, get, they offer up some really good advice. But there was one guy who uh, comments quite a bit. He's just a, a wonderful person from what I can gather. And he said, it's going to take you a year to do that camper. And I'm like, no way. I don't care if I have to work at 2 o'clock in the morning and get up at 4.30 in the morning. That camper, I've got it scheduled for three to four months. I want it done before the end of September. So if I can work on it from June, July, August, September, and just pound on it, then I'm hoping I can get it done. I do not want to be doing a build. Even if it just takes me five months, even to the end of October, that's fine. It starts getting cool in October, um, depending. But I'm not doing a build next winter. There's no way. So, God willing, I'll have it done. And I did up a budget for the cost of it too, so it's going to be in between six and seven grand. So I got to work lots at, at making money and work lots at building out that, that camper. So if I'm going to be doing that come June, this camp, this van has to be totally done. And that started before June. So that come June, I've got it at least ripped apart or started. I don't know. I don't even know how to start it. Do I rip everything away from the walls and totally gut it out and then start doing the floor? Do I do the floor and walls and then ceiling? That would be what I would think that how you would attack that build. You wouldn't want to do the walls first and then the floor, I don't think. So anybody that has done a rebuild on a camper, let me know the sequence of what I have to do. Um, do I gut everything first? I would imagine, and I would imagine you build from the bottom up. I don't know. And then I have to paint the back doors of Ivy, the hood of Ivy, and then while I'm at it, I'll get enough paint that I can paint that trailer as well. Um, that's something I don't have to do. I could just touch it up. But I'm OCD on certain things and I think I would like it to match Ivy. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I might be, my dream cup might be overflowing at this point. I don't know. But I just thought I'd pop in. Um, I've got a couple hours before I go to work. I've got to go over to the frozen camper. I don't want to leave my van at the heater right here. And uh, Wilson's at my feet on his blanket. So I don't want to move until I have to, to actually do it. So I take some garbage over and grab some water. Um, oh. 21 I'm at work and when I was loaded I passed a very large object 
that trucks are pulling. I have no idea how long this is going to take me. I'm going to turn the camera around and I will film as much as I can. There's, uh, there's a lot of a lot of police cars and tow trucks for this move. It's um, some kind of cylinder manufacturing uh, item, equipment, whatever. I don't know what they're doing. the first time. I have no idea how I did it. I don't think I pressed record. So I'm going to try to slow down. I have to be very careful because I am driving. and I dumped the load of snow that I have and now we're all you're not letting us go you're not letting us move because down that road it comes that cylinder it's not a cylinder I think it's like a silo of some sort or something for the oil field they're going down the straight way. If they were to move a big piece of equipment like that, this is the route that I would take to move something like that if I was going to um, the refineries. So I think it's something for the refinery, the oil refinery, gas refinery. So it's stinky and it's a refinery. Lots of tow trucks at the tips. These are all tow trucks. A one, two, and a wide load dude. Police.
I'll be back, little man. So because it overheated, it busted, well, it overflowed the coolant. There's the box because my steering wheel pump went. And there's a backstory to that. So anybody that's been with me knows that in May, I'm just going to take this box over and put it in my camper. But in May, I got a new steering wheel pump in house. So I've found out since that, oh gosh, it's so cold out. It's supposed to warm up tomorrow. Thank goodness. But uh, they make shifted up a racing car hose for the, the hose for the pump. And didn't change out my pump and I bought the parts so they didn't they took my pump and hose that I supplied supplied from a parts place and didn't change out the pump and then make made a new hose for it and kept the hose So I'm not happy. And the person that was going to fix it for me, his truck just broke down. So it's, yeah, it's 2 o'clock, 2.30. It's going to get dark by 4.35. Right, Will? And it's so cold that this heater only takes a bite off of the cold in the, the van. And it's so cold that in the van, just with this heater running, that Wilson's water will freeze. So last night I ran the truck three times. The last time I ran it, I smelt coolant in the back. And then by the time I got to the front, there was a noise and the smoke coming out of my under my hood. And uh, so we had to take they took off. It took off the serpentine belt that it slipped off. So we got to change it. I went and got that part, the pump. And the serpentine belt is good, thank goodness. It never wrecked it or stretched it. So we got to change out the steering wheel pump, put the serpentine belt back on. But that's going to have to wait till tomorrow because my friend's truck broke down. So he's got to get his truck running so he can get home tonight. And so Ivy and I are put on the back burner, which is totally 100% understandable. It's just a cold, rough day. And uh, we all have them, right? I'll be back to chat with you. Driver's side, front window, passenger side. Wilson. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> I'm so glad you're with your mom. Okay. Cold. Very cold. Um, my theater froze. Okay, so where do we start here? Okay, that was just an update for my friend. The friend that was helping me, his vehicle broke down and he's got to get it towed today. So I think he's trying to find a rented car. Funny stuff. Um, where was I? I'm cold. My feet are like ice. So, being on a budget, I have a solar panel, and I just never got a, any of the other items that you need for a solar system to work. 
And it also intimidated me a lot because um, I didn't really uh, know a lot of... It, this stuff just intimidated me. Anything electrical intimidates me. And I wasn't really going to go that way because I'd rather go to the most off-grid possible and then work my way back, if that makes any sense to anybody. Um, if anything ever... I'm all crunched up because I'm absolutely freezing. And as soon as I do the rest of this video, I've got blankets all wrapped around me. My feet are like ice. Boots are going to come off. They're going to get wrapped up in a blanket. And I'm going to cuddle up and make some supper for myself. And that heat, Wilson snoring. Um, the heat from the stove should give us a little bit more heat too. But anyway, getting back to why I went to a wood stove. I can always get wood. If anything ever happened, I know, and I really didn't just went in that direction because it was a more simpler way of, of heat source for me. And I also grew up majority of my life at our vacation cottage in New Brunswick, and it had a wood stove. It didn't have power to it. We had an outhouse. We had, it's like the fondest memories ever. So that's why I've chosen a wood stove. And when all else fails, you usually can find wood. And I don't plan on being in the city all the time when I'm not working. And when I am working, it's summer. So where do I start here? We'll start with Monday night I worked. It was extremely cold out. And there was a wind blowing. I had nowhere to, to um, plug in my van. So it sat for maybe 13 hours. And that's why my foamy froze. Because I had, like, if this is going, it'll keep everything basically thawed to a certain degree. But I'll periodically I'll start my van up and give it a really good blast of heat. And then I'm good for a while. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and I dress for the cold. So, long johns the whole bit. So, I'm getting used to it. And I know this is going to sound really strange. But this is my second winter. Um, the first winter I spent in my Honda Pilot. Well, I've been... I've been... Yeah. Then I got my van... Yeah, so this is my second winter because I got my van a year ago, March, and I moved out of my place a year ago, October, the end of October. So I have learned a lot because when I was in my Honda Pilot, I had no room with Wilson especially because he took up most of the room. I had the back seats to lay on and then the front seat. The driver's seat because the passenger seat was full and the only way that we stayed warm was by running the vehicle and I went through like six hundred dollars a month in fuel to keep us warm and then we got the van and it was March and it started warming up shortly after that we had some pretty cold nights so I think I have a video out about my floors being frozen <laughs> So yeah, there are videos out there of the whole, whole trip, but not too many in the Honda Pilot because that's just when I started my, my channel up. Um, and the whole reason for this channel is to document my journey with somebody that's older and on a budget. And the reason I moved out in the first place of my place was because in the winter time, I have a hard time, even though I'm looking for work, but there's so many people that are seasonal workers up here in Edmonton, is come winter time, a lot of the jobs are taken in the winter. It's, it's, it's easy if, you're, if you wanna do certain jobs, but there's certain jobs, I'm getting older, and I just don't wanna be out there in the cold doing certain jobs, and they're very labor intensive jobs. And uh, so I end up going on EI, and then it's feast and famine from work to EI. And I just, I couldn't 
do it anymore with the cost of living. And Wilson's my best friend. So in order for him to have space and me pay for a place, like a backyard, and I won't live in the bad part of Edmonton at all. It has to be a good area. So things are getting way too expensive. So I thought, okay, you know what? I had done a year before, a winter before, in a truck and uh, utility, one of those fiberglass utility campers. I built one of those out. Had a wood stove in it and did that for that winter. Traveled and it was great. I loved it. So I knew, okay, I had done a dry run. I ended up selling my truck and camper because it was awesome. It was beautiful. I did a beautiful job inside, but um, I had had an accident. Wilson saw a rabbit. We'll just make this a short accident review. But Wilson saw a rabbit. I got tangled up in his tow rope. And he smashed me into my camper and then took the legs out from underneath me. And I ended up having a concussion. I ripped out my shoulder, my rotor cuff, and my hand was hanging by tenants. So I had two surgeries on my wrist. I almost lost my hand. Um, so my family talked me into getting a place. So I did. Um, so I had already done a trial run and I knew that I could do this and I didn't have a problem with it. Um, there's a real sense of freedom. Burden seems to go right out the window. Um, I, I love living in my van. So, but with work, I got this in March and then I started my street sweeping in April and then I went right into work. And I ended up working seven day, six days a week. And so I had Sunday off, that was the only day. And I had maybe roughly five hours of build time to do. Then I had shower, laundry, and grocery shopping. So I was basically flat out for seven days a week, for seven months. And it was really hard on me. It burned me out. I wasn't eating right. And uh, so it's taken me a while to get this build done. And I worked from the back forward for just reasons. And anyone that's built out a vehicle that's I think that's how it usually goes I don't know um, but I had to get the divider wall up and everything behind that measured up right prop properly for everything else to fit so the wood stove has kind of come last and it's March and I've gone all winter without my wood stove and uh, that's why I've froze for two winters. Now in saying that, you've learned to troubleshoot and you learn things. And even though it was rough, it was a good experience. And I'm, you know, it's uncomfortable being cold, but you learn things along the way. And so there's no regrets. Tonight's going to be a cold night. Wilson's water will freeze. That's how cold it will get in here. Um, ever since Monday night and I had to thaw out my mattress with my body heat, I just haven't been able to get warm. And it's been cold out. So I've been kind of just doing nothing and snuggling up in blankets with the heater right by me. Um, drinking lots of teas and coffees and trying to stay in as much as I can. And... Uh, even at night, I have a lot of blankets and I'm never cold, but ever since Monday, Tuesday morning, um, I've been cold. I've had a chill. So I can't turn my van on tonight and give it those blasts of heat. And I don't know. It's going to be a chilly one. Tomorrow's supposed to warm up. So, I'm so glad. Now, I was gifted something. 
it's extremely expensive and um, I was waiting for it to warm up to share it with you guys it was at the bottom of my wish list and it was at the bottom because um, it's expensive and then with the camper build coming up it re really went down my wish list way at the bottom but um, it's going to come in handy so I can't wait to share that with you now as far as everything else goes Tuesday morning when I woke up and I came out to the parking lot I stopped my truck to turn on my truck my van to warm it up while I was parking my tandem and doing my paperwork and stuff and I had to write up an issue with my truck and stuff so I knew it would take me a few minutes so I was hoping the van would warm up well it didn't but when I started it I heard a pop over where the heating core is so I had my friend come by and take a look at it and he said I don't think it's your manifold that's leaking I think it's been your heating core all along now at the very top of my intake manifold are two heads or two bolt areas and that's where the coolant was pooling and I asked him before the heating core was leaking and popped well whatever could that have been mistaken for the intake manifold and he thinks it wasn't my intake manifold. He thinks it was my heating core all along. So I've been saving up for an intake manifold. Um, it's $753 and change. So we'll say $754. The heating core is $1,190 and some odd dollars. So we'll, we'll go $1,200. So we're looking at two grand to get those things fixed. So if I can cross off the intake manifold, if it's not the intake manifold, gaskets, seals, whatever they, they're calling it, um, that's, we'll just say $800. I can scratch off $800. My friend said that he will change my heating core for me. Heating cores run about $70. So let's round it up to 80 just in case something else decides to pop its ugly face in there. So we'll say $80. So if I don't have to have the labor done for the heating core, because I have to take off my doghouse and I think my dash too, for them to get at it because these vans, everything's just cramped up. It's not a friendly vehicle to have to work on. So when you have something go wrong, it can be pretty costly because it's time consuming and things are hard to get at. So if I don't have the intake manifold to do, someone's gonna do my heating core for me, bless his heart, um, then I only have to spend $70. I can go shopping, no. I only have to save up $70, which is amazing. Um, it's such a blessing. Um, Two grand would would be tough for me. So it would be tough for anybody, really. So I am so blessed. Anybody that has a mechanic that can work on their vehicle, usually you buy them a case of beer and give them, throw them some money, you get the part for them. This guy doesn't drink. He won't. I'm pretty sure he won't take money. And um, so it's probably just going to cost me a coffee and a pizza. I don't know. I'll get out there and help them. I'll we'll try to do some recording of it too. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of smoke coming out from underneath my hood this morning. I'm not really sure what I've already said because I had to stop the video and answer the phone call. Um, but that steering wheel pump, I got that and a hose done last May and for some, like who does that? Who does that to people? Where they make shift up a hose for you and then they don't change the pump and then they either shelf it or sell it back. You know, how do people look at themselves in the mirror or sleep at night? 
And I'm sure they don't do it to everybody, but they do it to people that they can get away with it, you know? A woman coming in. And I'm not that dumb as far as mechanics stuff goes. I'm probably a lot more advanced than a lot of people, even men, but... And I'm not saying that against women or anything. I'm just saying I've driven a tandem. I know out of my eight back rear tires, if there's even one that's a little low, um, I do have a brain up here that somewhat mechanically goes that way and I did take one year of millwright um, and I knew there was something wrong with my steering wheel because if I ex you know when you extend your your steering wheel to one side um, and it makes that kind of like hissing noise well it was doing that on minor turns and I had taken it back to him and he just pushed me off and said he had to make a phone call. And that's when I decided I wasn't going to go back to his shop anymore. And I was recommended that shop by a supervisor at work because that automotive shop was right beside where I work for years. And they probably got acquainted and he probably sent me his way to just bring the guy business, I guess. I don't know. But the, the man is horribly rude. And obviously a crook. I told him a few things. I even said to him, I said, well, I'm going to phone a tow truck and have it towed over there. And you're going to pay for the tow truck. And you're going to pay for the new pump. And he goes, no, I don't think so. So I told him, I said, you know, when you do things like this to people, it does come back on you one day. I said, it'll come back on you one day. And I said, and also I'll be leaving a really bad review. So, nasty me. But you know, looking at it positively, um, I've got water, I can make up tea tonight. It's gonna be chilly in here. I'm just getting, I'm just really chilled, I think, from the beginning of the week. It's only Wednesday. And it's been so cold out, and my feet have been really cold. So, I'm a little whiny, I'm sorry. Um, but I have water, I can make up tea, I have food, I can cook supper up, that stove will heat up the van a bit. I do have this heater, it'll take the bite off of things. I have Wilson, lots of blankets, and I'm looking at someone helping me out with a lot of stuff that's gonna cost me maybe $70 compared to two grand. And even if I do have to have that intake manifold done, then I've already been saving for that. And I've been thinking about it for months now, so it's like nothing new. I don't know. So thinking positively. And this video is not for... My subscribers are older, and I just love my subscribers, they're great. Uh, but majority of them are older, and I have more women than men. But I think this video is going to be more inclined to interest men than it will the women. So I'm sorry you guys, the women out there. Because it's got the cracker off to the refinery clip in there and it's got all this automotive stuff so there's no stencils and ruffles for the women this time <sighs> no decorating um, and no building my home out not yet but getting back to my wood stove um, I'm gonna kind of go backwards on that one because I'd rather work from the most off-grid to the more comfortable, more technical stuff like solar panels and electrical stuff. I've got this heater now um, and eventually I'll probably put in, I've got my Mr. Buddy which was taken apart and fixed so I've got my Mr. Buddy too. And I'll have my wood stove. Um, 
I do have a solar panel, like I said. And if I can get around to it, I probably will get another one and put in a solar system somewhere. I do have my fold at one for my battery. Um, but it's not enough to run a diesel heater. And I would rather haul fuel for my van than haul diesel for a diesel heater. But then again, it's not very much you have to haul anyway. So I'm just going to see where I'm at next year. And try to incorporate a diesel heater. I know a lot of people are think I'm crazy, but I really don't want to rely on anybody but myself. So if there ever was a problem with having to get fuel of any kind, um... I'd rather have to rely on getting wood on my own, if that makes sense to anybody. Everyone's different. And it, it's, diesel heaters are so popular, so um, I'm the odd man out anyway on this one. But it just, it was intimidating to me, and... Um, I wanted to get a good diesel heater, like a very expensive one, because I see that everyone has so much problems with them, and I don't even know where to begin with stuff like that, So, and with a solar system. So that's why I never put that system in to begin with, because it intimidated me. But I still have to do my roof at some point. I better turn off my light before I end up burning down the battery. Um, at some point, because I don't have my roof done still, I can still install the electrical part. And one solar panel is not going to do it, so I'll probably pick up another one. So I'll, that'll give me 200 watts. And hopefully if I can uh, stretch out and make good money this summer, my camper build won't take all the money. <laughs> that I make and I do have to save extra to get me through the winter so I don't know I don't make a whole whole bunch of money but anyway I'm gonna let you guys go um, I will be putting up another video in a couple of days uh, send me lots of hugs tonight we're not having a pity party it's just I'm really not looking forward to another cold night. Um, last night was not too, too bad. But like I said, I only run the vehicle a couple of times through the night. I was up at 3. Usually I don't run my vehicle through the night at all. I'll run it before I go to bed and then first thing in the morning. Um, but I did last night at 3. So it's just going to be a chilly chilly night when I come out from underneath the blankets but we'll get through it and it's supposed to warm up tomorrow so everything's good there's so many positives in all this I mean if I hadn't heard that pop then um, I wouldn't have found out about my intake manifold and then um, the offer to do my heating core for me and then my my steering wheel pump went today and they're going to do that for me it's all positive the only negative thing is is it's negative temperatures so it'll all work out thank you for joining me tonight and um i hope everyone's doing well and always try to find the positive in things and just be grateful for what you have. We will see you in a few days.